Hello and welcome to episode 11 of your Leader Breeder podcast with myself and your host, Aidan Jeffrey. The Leader Breeder podcast is a leadership podcast dedicated to helping you discover and develop your leadership voice in order to deliver greater value in your life, career, ministry and business. In today's episode, we're going to have a look at leaders who think right always win. Leaders who think right always win. Super excited for today's episode. And before we get into this episode today, a reminder of the many resource platforms available to you to access for free, including our Prosper Clock app, where you can record declarations, scripture verse declarations into the app, record it, save it as a ringtone, and then set an alarm. And whenever you set the alarm, for whatever time you set it, when it triggers, it you will hear yourself confessing and declaring God's word because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. To access all the different resource platforms available to you, simply go to leaderbreederworld.com. That is leaderbreederworld.com, one word, or I am born to prosper.com. And you can go and look at many free resources available to you there, courses, books available, all kinds of stuff that you can use in your leadership development process. And so super excited to be with you today. Episode 11 already. Come on, can't wait to be with you on the other side of this. I'll see you now. Well, leaders who think right always win. Henry Ford said, if you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. If you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. How a person thinks is important. James Allen said, you are today where your thoughts have brought you. And you'll be tomorrow where your thoughts take you. So today as we get into this month's episode, and I really just felt in my heart that as we are going through in this modern world we live in, so much information overload flooding into our hearts and minds, so much negative information access into our lives on a daily basis through all the different platforms that we are constantly engaging with, news, bad news, good news, so many things, so many choices to make. And very often without realizing it, we start to develop stinking thinking. We start to think more of the things we can't do. And that affects everything in our life. And the Bible says in Proverbs 23 verse 7, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I love what the Passion Translation says, For as he thinks within himself, so is he. So as a man or a woman think, a leader thinks on the inside, so are they on the outside. And I think it goes without saying that when it comes to prosperous thinking or healthy thinking, Sometimes it's not as easy as always just, well, wake up in the morning and everything's positive. A person has to develop a healthy mind. A person has to put boundaries in place. And as a leader, especially if you're leading an organization, employing staff, planning for a future, an unknown future, when it comes to the economic sector as pastors, very often we hear so many statistics of churches shutting down, pastors quitting in ministry. And it's not just in, in the church world, but in so many facets of life. And we're seeing this young generation, this current Gen Y generation, Gen Z generation, the highest suicide rate in the world. And I don't try to labor the point again in this episode, but it's always results down to one thing. And it's as a man thinketh, as a person thinketh, when a person gets to a place of hopelessness, you think there aren't any options. And it's purely very often your thought life. And I'm going to really just challenge us today in this episode as I do a Born to Prosper seminar. If you've never attended the Born to Prosper seminar, you wouldn't know about the one of the sections we do in there. We cover a whole chapter in the seminar called Prosperous Thinking. And that's why when you change your mind, you can change your life. If you look at scripture verse, very often Christians, they want to spiritualize everything, especially in the Christian sector. People want to spiritualize everything and say, well, you know, thought or the power of positive thinking, Norman Vincent Peale, everybody wants to ignore those things very often. And again, if you go to extremes on the one side or extremes on the other side, both of those are in error. But it's very clear from Scripture as well that we are three-part beings. I mean, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. So your body is actually the smallest part of who you are, although it's the, the most visible part. It's the smallest part, actually. But your soul is where your memory, your will, your intellect, your reasoning, your thought life, all that lies in your soul realm. And in your spirit realm, that's who God is. And so we have to work at all three of these facets all the time in our lives. And sometimes you can make a lot of money, you can make a great success in the natural, but your health is waning or your you know, your mental health is deteriorating. Your spirit life can also start taking a back seat. 
reneging on church, not attending church like we used to, because now we're managing the blessing for God. And so in order to endure to the end, to last this race, especially in this modern world we live in right now, I want to challenge you today that leaders who think right always win, because if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And so that's why we have to ensure that we are we get more revelation, more understanding on the way that we think. So listen to what the Bible says about negative thinking, changing your negative thinking into prosperous, positive thinking. The Bible is very clear, very loud on the way we think. And it's not just, like I said, everything spiritual in Scripture. There is a natural part. There's a physical part. There's many challenges to our three-part being in Scripture. Listen to what Romans 12 verse 2 says in the New Living Translation. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So notice the Bible says you will know what God's will is for you, but it's attached to how we think. Romans 12 verse 2, the same verse in the Living Bible says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but be a new and different person with a new freshness in all that you do and think. Then you will learn from your own experience how his ways will really satisfy you. So we see again, different version, but all about thinking. The Passion Translation in the same scripture verse says, Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. So notice the spirit and the soul work hand in hand. This will empower you to discern God's will for you as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in His eyes. So often we can listen to successful people in the soul realm. So many successful sort of not entertainers wrong word motivational teachers and lecturers out in the world and they can teach so logically and so correctly because they they focus predominantly on the the soul realm or the mind or the brain that area of your makeup but this bible is very clear that we need the holy spirit and our soul realm in order to understand and know how to think correctly and so it's not just one or the other because as i said earlier otherwise we'll transgress into error on either one of the three if you only focus on your physical like many people do as well we see these people that have these incredible physical transformations and although that's great to have a great physique we have to learn how to work at all three at various times in order to keep our spirit soul and body healthy this is what philippians 4 verse 8 says in the new living translation verse 8 and 9 it says and now dear brothers and sisters one final thing Fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, that's Paul the Apostle speaking, and everything you heard from me and saw me doing. So we see he challenges us to fix our thoughts, because your thoughts can be all over the show. They can be in a place of chaos, it can be a place of peace. But notice how he concludes this verse. He says, then the God of peace will be with you. So peace follows the place where you fix your thoughts. If you fix your thoughts on things that are untrue, because the Bible says fix your thoughts on things that are true. If you fix your thoughts on things that are dishonorable, because the Bible says fix your thoughts on things that are honorable. Fix your thoughts on things that are right. So we can fix them on things that are wrong. Fix your thoughts on things that are pure, lovely, admirable. Every one of those Words have an opposite, impure, was lovely, whatever's admirable, things you admire in someone, things you look you look down on somebody. You can you can decide to focus on the negative. And the Bible says when you focus on the negative and you think on the negative and you think on the things that are all wrong and what you can't do, that's exactly what you're going to achieve. If you haven't really listened to the Born to Prosper series at all or the, the 90 Day Devotional or the God's Financial Secrets series, on the Leader Breed platform as well, I encourage you to do so because we talk about the two principles that God governs His earth on, the law of seed time and harvest and the law of dominion and control. And we find that this law of seed time and harvest works in every facet of our lives. You know, Proverbs 18 says that death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat of its fruit. So we see this principle again, this law of seed time and harvest. If you speak words of death or you speak words of life, you will eat the fruit of death or the fruit of life. So we decide that, we choose that. And it's the same goes for our thought life. 
as a man thinketh on the inside, so are they on the outside. And we can see that when we talk about thought life, even Jesus challenged our thought and heart conditions. In Matthew 12, 33, he said that either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. And he's speaking to the Jews, and he says, Brood of vipers to the Pharisees, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things. So we see throughout Scripture this, this thread is always about the choice that we make, the, the law of seed time and harvest. And when it comes to our thought life, where we choose to fix our thoughts as leaders, business owners, pastors, uh, members of a church or your employee at a company, whatever your position is in life, you have to understand that as you think, whatever you choose to focus on is what you're going to consume. And that, the Bible says, is going to penetrate your heart. And that's eventually going to come out of your mouth. Well, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. I don't know how I'm going to get through this month. I don't know where I'm going to find a job. I don't know how I'm ever going to find a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend or get married. Or All these are heart conditions, thought conditions over time. And so in the Born to Prosper seminar, I cover a section called Habits Form Futures. And it's exceptionally in- interesting when you look at this very powerful book, The Common Denominator of Success by Albert Ian Gray. He wrote a, a very successful book, a powerful little book, short little book. But he speaks about the common denominator of success. Because if you talk about leaders who think right always win, ultimately we want to win. Jesus already has overcome sin and death on Calvary. And through him and in him, we overcome uh, one day in eternity. But while we're on this earth, we have to operate by faith. And in this book, Albert Ian Gray says, he says, the common denominator of success, the secret of success of every man and woman who has ever been successful lies in the fact that they form the habit of doing things that failures don't like to do. That's very powerful. Let me read that again. He says, The secret of success of every man and woman who have ever been successful lies in the fact that they form the habit of doing things that failures don't like to do. So every single qualification for success is acquired through habit. Because people form habits and habits form futures. Your thought life becomes habitual as well. We're going to look a little bit later on as well about your the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and what effect it has and how the one impacts the other. And eventually you live it out through your body and whatever your body is living out in the natural will impact your results in life. So if you do not deliberately form good habits, Ian Gray goes on to say that unconsciously you will form bad ones. So you are the kind of man or woman you are because you have formed the habit of being that kind of person And the only way you can change is through habit. If successful men and women, Ian Gray goes on to say, don't like to do these things, then why do they do them? Because by doing the things they don't like to do, they can accomplish the things they want to accomplish. (laughs) I mean, that's, wow. I mean, you might be saying amen or ouch, depending on which side of the particular habit you find yourself currently. I mean, Robert A. Russell also said this. He said, for something to change, Something must be removed and some for something to be added. So, in other words, for bad habits to be changed, they must be replaced with new habits until new good habits are formed. Russell goes on to state that whenever you are faced with what seems impossible or unachievable, it is simply a reflection of your conditioning and not your potential. Think of that again. Let me, let me repeat that. These, there's a few statements that are worth repeating here in this episode today. So, whenever you are faced with what seems impossible, because all of us at times will face impossible things, seemingly impossible things. I mean, Jesus said, what is impossible with man is possible with God. And sometimes in our limited humanity, we can see things as impossible. That's why we need God, the spirit, and our soul realm together to get through certain challenges in life sometimes. But he says, whatever you are faced with what seems impossible or unachievable, it's simply a reflection of your conditioning and not your potential. So in Christ, in God, as a leader, you've got great potential. But sometimes your thought life, the way you think, has conditioned you to think you can't. And as I said again at the opening of this episode that Henry Ford said, if you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. So if you think about that for a moment, that your negative or bad habits are not who God designed you to be, but it's a condition that has been acquired or formed over time, giving you the bad results that you don't want. And the good news in this episode today is that 
your, your conditioned mind, if it's negative, can be conditioned positively over time. I mean, it's so important to understand that as much as what you are negative in your thinking, you can become positive in your thinking, and that is through habit. Sometimes we form negative or bad habits, and we have to make a decision to say, where am I focusing my attention? Where am I focusing my thoughts, my conversations, my environment? What, who am I surrounding myself with? Do I get involved in a lot of negative conversations, a lot of negative news, a lot of negative you know, social media posts, always worrying about what can go wrong? Or do I start to see what can go right? That all depends upon where I fix my thoughts. I mean, sometimes we think biblical characters like Paul the Apostle, or as most people like to call him, Saint Paul, I mean, in Romans 7.15, he says, I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. So every person, despite Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who overcame every temptation and did not give in to it, had battles in some shape, form, or size. And so that's why it's important you understand that you are going, when it comes to thinking, you can't just suddenly empty your mind, because the Bible doesn't say remove your mind. The Bible says renew your mind. That means you have to take whatever is old or negative or wrong, and you have to, by through the power of repetition, you have to teach and form and forge your mind into a positive space. And that is possible through repetition. But change, changing your mind, changing your thoughts also requires mentoring. That's why sometimes we think we're on this journey alone. I mean, even this podcast, it's a form of mentorship because you're able to put it on, listen to it at gym, in your car, your home, wherever it is. And all these are forms of mentoring. Books are forms of mentoring. Pastors are forms of mentoring. Professors, teachers, personal trainers at gym, all forms of mentoring. That's why it's important you understand the need to stay in healthy relationships. So you'll notice that when you look at these weight loss programs on television, I think it's the biggest losers, one of them. And you watch how these overweight contestants arrive here because the challenge is to lose the most weight. And again, like Robert A. Russell says that it's not your potential, it's your conditioning. And so when they get to these homes, they go spend a month or two or three, I don't know how long the season is, but they go away. And then they spend time with personal trainers. And what the whole process is, is to take them out of a, a bad way of thinking about food, nutrition, and they start to change them. And then they have personal trainers who are in shape. And so I say to you as well, in order to change your thinking, if you're in a bad space or a negative space, if you're going through pressure with your business or going through pressure in some area of your life, it's important that you look for people, resources that are positive, that can really just hold you accountable, challenge you to say, hey, it's going to be okay. You're going to come through this thing, but you have to understand that if you are not going to be intentional to take responsibility to start to remove, not just add positive onto negative. We have to remove the negative and we have to then replace it with positive. It's like I always say to the church, it's like when you want to lose weight, you, you've you been eating Cadbury's and now the nutritionist says, hey, you've got to eat cauliflower or you've been eating beacon and now you've got to eat uh, broccoli. So what we like to do is, well, let me eat the beacon and then just eat the broccoli on top of that. Or let me eat the broccoli and then eat the beacon afterwards in the hope that I'm going to be healthy. But you'll notice no nutritionist will tell you just add the healthy stuff onto the bad stuff. They're going to tell you to remove the bad stuff and then replace it with good stuff. And that's what we have to learn to do. Same with our thought life. You know, if you are constantly in this negative spiral of just everything you look at and everything becomes cynical and critical, it's not because you're a bad person. It's because you've conditioned your mind to think and see bad because that's where you've placed it. You've fixed it there for so long that it's now become part of who you are. And if you really are honest today, you'll say to yourself, I don't want to be that person because Paul said so. He said, I don't want to do these things. I don't understand myself. I know that I'm supposed to do the opposite, but when I find myself, I'm doing exactly the opposite. And so it's through choice. And that's why I say to you as well that if you watch these overweight contestants and some of them would go on to exceptional results and Every day it's hard in the beginning because you'll notice they're in such bad habits. They can't even run a few meters without being out of breath. They can't do push-ups. They can't do sit-ups. Some of them sort of throw their toys and they get upset and they cuss and swear at the personal trainers. And some of them cheat at nighttime when they're supposed to be sleeping or when the personal trainer goes away. Some of them, they chow down and they don't lose the weight. And then others just quit on themselves because the process is too hard. And it's amazing to see just that transformation to take the old bad habits and replace him with new. And then some of them kick on, endure, they stay faithful to the course, they have to work hard at their mental 
capacity and some of them push through and then you watch those results and I mean the families get to see them after three months or whatever the time span is and they flabbergasted to see this sort of overweight person go into this competition and come out this in shape fit person and again like I said Robert A. Russell says whenever you face something that is seemingly impossible it's not your potential it's your conditioning and so you have to condition your mind to a positive place as well so remember when it comes to the results of succeeding in life, the only difference between a person succeeding and a person failing is that both are taught. So all successful people have been taught to be successful and so can you. All success is learnable. I mean, think about that for a moment. What makes a person know something that you don't know? Well, someone taught them that. Because if you put three babies in the maternity ward or in the hospital and they're all lying next to each other, they're born on the same day, let's say, They could be from three different backgrounds, from their parents, their their grandparents. They can all three can have different backgrounds, social backgrounds, backgrounds, financial backgrounds. And yet those that have a lot of money or more money or more sort of able to, to live a normal life, those children can actually grow on to become average or they grow on to become successful. And the person who is in a poverty condition or in a poverty state, the parents, they go back to a poverty environment, they go back to a house where there's no money. Most sadly, those children often, not all the time, but often, they end up becoming like their surroundings. They stay in a place of poverty because all they hear all the time, all they see all the time is poverty. And so sometimes we think we're worse off than other people or we're not worthy to be blessed or to have success in life. And that's a mindset. That's a thought pattern. Because the only reason why a child of a rich parent ends up becoming wealthy themselves is because they surrounded themselves and they were taught by their rich parents what they knew and then they became successful themselves. But the Bible says God's not a respecter of people. So if God was a respecter of people, then you'd have sort of favorites and non-favorites, but he doesn't. Because the playing fields are open to every single person who chooses to take responsibility for their thought life, where they fix their thoughts, what they do in life. And in business, it's the same. I mean, the only reason why some businessmen are very successful is because they see a great future. They see a bright future. They think right. And when you think right, you win. But if you think wrong, you lose. It's a principle. And remember, all successful people have been taught to be successful. So you can teach yourself to get out of the place of negative thinking, thinking, and get to a place of successful thinking. Not always easy. Sometimes it's it's challenging, but you are able to, to do that, but in time. So one of the things you have to realize is, that your mind is not your brain. And when it comes to thought life, thought life is your imagination. Sometimes we confuse the brain with the mind and we think that your IQ is your is your limitation. I mean, I always tell the church as well, I mean, I used to do well at maths until they added the alphabet. I mean, so it's like sin, cause, and tan. I mean, I was doing okay with ones and threes and fives. And the minute you started to tell me sin, this, and X, that, and tan, this, I was hey, well, listen, now it's becoming very confusing. And it's just because I'm not wired maybe with a mathematical uh, emphasis or mathematical mind engineering. I think if I had to build you a bridge, it's going to fall down. But there's other things that I'm a lot more gifted and talented in than other people who have different ways. But that's IQ. So sometimes we go to school, and when we all went to school, or we or might still be in school, and you're sitting there, and the teacher says, you know, you're dumb, you're stupid, you can't amount to anything, which is why the story of a mentor of mine, Peter J. Daniels, was such an inspiration when I was a young businessman many years ago. And I was going through a battle and I was just surrounded by debt and struggle and lack. And eventually my then pastor, Pastor Eddie van Amerva, gave me a book of this man called Peter Daniels who was at their Bible school when they were in America. And the book's name was Miss Phillips, You Were Wrong. And another book he wrote was How to Be Happy, Though Rich. And so I was exposed to this man's teachings and that for the first time in my life. And I was just blown away because I'd never heard somebody speak like this, that you could actually transform yourself. And Peter Daniel's story is he was an orphan and he went to a school and his school teacher was Miss Phillips. And because he was this afraid, traumatized, rejected child, he was very withdrawn and he never participated in school. And of course, he just couldn't keep up with society at large. He just was this seemingly backward child. And one day, Miss Phillips grabbed him by his jaw and said to him, Peter Daniel's, you'll never amount to anything. And those words had power. And he took those words as to say, I can do nothing with my life. And this carried on his whole life until he was 26 when he got born again. And at 26, he couldn't even read or write. He had to teach himself because he rebelled against everything most of his life. And he was this little rebel. And at 26, he got saved. 
And so when I encountered him through this book, and that at that stage he was 73, and he was the owner of three banks, and he was a billionaire. And I thought to myself, wow, how does a guy go from 26 not being able to read or write to becoming a billionaire at 73 throughout his life? But the whole sort of premise of his testimony is the fact that he had to change the way that he thought. He had to read books. He had to seek, knock, and ask. He had to develop and change that negative paradigm. So, you know, his conditioning was one of rebellion, negativity, lack, poverty. But that wasn't his potential. His potential was always to own three banks. His potential was always to walk in the blessing, the favor of God. And I say this to you today as well. Your potential is not bankruptcy, lack. The only reason why you might be experiencing that in your life in some area is because of your conditioning. You've conditioned yourself over time, and you can change that conditioning. An unfit person can become fit. An overweight person can get in shape. A person with negative thought lives can have positive thought lives, and it's going to take responsibility. It's going to take effort. That's why we developed the Prosper Clock app to help and assist to trigger your memory when you are busy in your day, you set an alarm on your phone and suddenly when it goes off, oh yes, I remember I'm supposed to be saying this. That was the purpose of the app and it is the purpose of the app. And I want to encourage you to take responsibility, find nutritious declarations, find them. There must be hordes on the internet and the app will have a few, but go study scripture and find positive statements, read inspirational statements that speak to you and then declare them into the app and record them and save them as ringtones, call it I'm able or whatever you're going to call your ringtone and then assign that ringtone to an alarm and when that alarm goes off then just let it serve as a reminder because the Holy Spirit is there to remind us and to teach us who Christ is but technology can help us and the app will trigger a thought process in your head and heart and you go, ah, well, I'm not sure if that's for me. Well, that's a conditioned action. That's a conditioned statement. Well, the rich people do that or those people do that. I was reminded of a time when one of my family members came around to visit and we had these little cereal dispensers in our kitchen. You put the cereal in on top and you turn the little lever, then the cereal pops out the bottom, you hold your bowl at the bottom. And I mean, they're cheap. They, you can buy them at most uh, stores. And they're not very expensive. And when the, one of the children said to my kids, like, what is that? And one of the family members piped off and said, it's something that rich people use. And although it's a humorous story and you go, well, I received that declaration over my life. But it's amazing how some people will just see a, a little plastic cereal dispenser as what rich people do. And sometimes we see that as well. We look at a rich person driving a big car or living in a big house and we go, oh, they must be arrogant. Or, oh, they must have stolen money. Or, oh, they must. But it's a conditioning because you're not there. And I don't say the quest for life is to own everything on the earth because the Bible said, what does it help we gain the whole world? What does it help we do these things? But if you look at Scripture, I mean, Jesus was very intentional to teach that we are born to prosper. He was very intentional to teach that. Why? Because he took his disciples who were toiling all night, the Bible says, and they caught nothing, because that's sometimes what happens when you toil in your mind or you toil in your thought processes or you awake all night thinking what you can't, what you can't, what you can't, and you catch nothing except to just worry, doubt, and fear. It stays a continual pattern. And so Jesus arrives at his disciples and he says to them, he says, I see you toiling in your own effort. He says, now cast your net out on the other side, which speaks of strategy. And then in the same place where there was no fish in their own ability, suddenly they caught a net breaking amount of fish. Now I share this story often whenever I speak to people to illustrate the fact that if Christ was against multiplication or against blessing or against advancement, why would he fill up their nets to an overflow? Now we know for the spiritual that are listening today, <laughs> yes, but Pastor Aiden, he said, no longer will you catch fish like we're going to catch men. Well, then spiritualize that. Then surely, if you're part of a small church, then I should say to you, well, you must be in error because Jesus said that full net, large net, breaking net illustrated the, what the church should be. So then we should only have massive large churches in the, in the world and never have a small church because Jesus illustrated abundance when he came and he said in John 10, 10, I have come that you might have life and have it in abundance. So it's important that you understand that your mind, your thoughts, your vision, what you see, it's conditioning. It's not potential. You have the potential. Because Peter Daniels, when I encountered him, he was such an inspiration to me. And at that point, I was one of the lowest points in my life. And then he challenged me with a statement that I've shared often. It's a mantra for my life. It's part of my life. Statements wake me up at three in the morning and I'll repeat it to you. And he said, what have you read in the last six months that once you've read it, and applied it to your life will show an upward forward mobilization of your income. 
And that just challenged me. And I started to become a reader. I was a lazy learner because many people are lazy learners. And leaders are readers. Readers are learners. And learners are earners. And the only reason why someone is earning more money than you or is advancing quicker than you is because they know something you don't know. But remember, all success is learnable. Successful people are only successful because they've been taught to be successful. So people that make money on the stock exchanges because they've been taught to, to understand shares and how the stock market works. People that make money on property, they've been taught, they've studied to show themselves approved, they've invested their time, their treasure, their talent into an area and they've become good at that and now they make more money. A sportsman, they weren't born a brilliant sportsman, they might have the talent for it, but they had to develop it over time. Their conditioning and their potential had to be worked at. If their conditioning was bad, they had to get their conditioning in a good place and so they could realize their potential. But when it comes to your mind and your brain, we can confuse IQ with imagination. And I always say to, to people, imagination is imagine a nation. In other words, you can think. So if you can think, you can, you can achieve. Because Napoleon Hill said, what the mind can conceive and the heart can believe can be achieved. And so sometimes we confuse, like I said, IQ with imagination, but, but all IQ levels can think. I use a, an example in my Born to Prosper seminar. One of the examples I use is I make everybody, and maybe you can do that now as well if you want to. If you're able to, I wouldn't suggest you close your eyes because I make everybody close their eyes. And I make them go back to grade one. And as I speak right now, let me ask you, what was grade one like when you started out of school? Can you think back? You think what you what you were wearing that day. Where did you go to school? What was your school's name? Did you go with your, your older sibling? Did you go with your parents? Did you go alone? Were you in boarding school? Were you what what were you wearing? What was the colors of your school shirt? What was the or your dress? Or what was your teacher's name? Can you remember your teacher's name? Or I can say to you, you just won a all expenses paid trip to Hawaii, business class tickets, and as you are boarding the plane, you've been served your own cubicle in first class, not business class, first class. It's where you got your own private little room and there's free movies and you are well looked after. After the, a long flight, comfortable flight, flat beds, being served by the, the air hostesses to the best of your ability, you arrive after a short trip to your, your beautiful seaside cabin and you arrive there in the early hours of the, of the morning and suddenly the sun is just starting to peek its head out and you open up these beautiful wooden glass doors and it goes out onto this long deck and it's the crystal clear blue water is lapping either side of this deck and you are walking out and you and your wife or you and your husband are holding hands and you're walking out towards this beautiful deck and you you can't believe how extremely beautiful this place is and you're realizing I'm going to be here for two weeks and we're going to have the best time of our life. And I use that illustration in my seminar to illustrate that your imagination could go back in your memory and you can remember back to what grade one was like. And that, you, and you can vividly, you can go, yes, I remember this. If I make you think about that for a moment, you can go, wow, now that I think about it, I can remember this and this and this. And that's your thought as a man thinketh. And I took you forward in your imagination. You might never have been to Hawaii or been to a place like that, but I could see it. When you, as you explain, I could actually see it. And you could imagine the future. So if you can imagine the future and you can memorize or think back of the past, that's the power of your imagination. And that's your thinking. So if you think it's going to go bad, you can, you can start to almost anticipate things to go bad because you've thought it bad, because you can think ahead. Or you can start to change that image and say, well, I see this is going to be a great year. As a move of CRC, past that has declared this year to be the year of supernatural acceleration. So what do you see? Do you see yourself supernaturally accelerating? Or do you see yourself as just ticking over the days, actually decelerating, going backwards? That's all thought. It's all choice. And you can decide that. Yes, but Pastor, the, we have to be realistic. The economists say that there's another recession coming and the interest rates are rising. Sure. I'm not saying to try and avoid reality. But I am saying that you can form your future by the way that you think. And if you can conceive it in the heart and you can believe it in your mind, you can achieve it. So I want to encourage you, is your conditioned thought can change because leaders who think right always win. I want to conclude this in this episode and I can spend so much more time and we're going to open this up in the Born to Prosper series. If you're not part of that series on this platform as well, get part of that because we're going to cover this in a lot more detail 
in the episodes that lie ahead. But did you know that your mind is made up of two parts? Number one, the top part, if you can see a circle and you can see a line through a circle in the center, the top half of that circle is your conscious mind and the bottom half of that circle is your subconscious mind. And that is what your mind is made up of. Now, again, most Christians shut off and they go, oh, well, yeah, this guy goes with this new age stuff. But it's not new age at all. Remember we read in the, in the beginning of this episode that the Bible is very clear, fix your thoughts. But did you know that the conscious mind is the part of you that thinks, it reasons. This is where your free will lies. It's the part of your mind. So it chooses your energy level. That's why you're either depressed or lethargic or often it's because of your thoughts. So your conscious mind can accept or reject any idea. So if you hear something or you read something or somebody says something to you, your conscious mind has the ability to accept it or reject it. It's got that ability. That's the power of your conscious mind. It's like you're listening to me right now and I'm in my conscious mind and you're in your conscious mind so you can uh, hear what I'm saying. But when we dream, it's our subconscious mind that keeps us alive because our conscious mind is, is sleeping. So our subconscious mind is is now keeping us alive. Whenever you go to, you see these videos on social media where a person comes out of anesthesia in an, operate, in an operating table and they be rattling off all this stuff. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's actually quite revealing and the parents are getting embarrassed and the child saying things they never would have said before. But it's because anesthesia knocks out your conscious mind. Now think about that for a moment. When, you're, when your conscious mind has been knocked out by anesthesia in an operating table, they can cut you and pull you and, and you don't feel any pain because your conscious mind, it's switched off. But your subconscious mind, when you start to come out of anesthesia, it stays awake all the time. And so it starts to reveal things that you think about that no one knows you're thinking about because you've got control of your subconscious mind to, to a certain extent when your conscious mind is awake. But when you are sleeping or when you come out of anesthesia, suddenly you've got no control. And you watch, it's very funny. And sometimes it's embarrassing, like I say. But your mind is made up of two parts. And so no person or circumstance can cause you to think any thoughts or ideas that you do not choose in your conscious mind. So this is important because the thoughts you choose will eventually determine the results in your life. So all pain, pleasure, abundance, or limitation is either originated in your conscious mind or accepted uncritically from an outside source. So you can choose. I place before you life and death, blessing and cursing. You choose that through your conscious mind. But then, like I said, if you have a look at a circle, the bottom half is your subconscious mind. And this is the part of you that is certainly the most magnificent. It's your power center. It functions in every cell of your body. Every thought or word your conscious mind chooses to accept, this part must be accepted by your subconscious. Your subconscious, listen, has no ability to reject what the conscious mind gives it. Now, this part of you operates in an orderly manner. It expresses itself through you in feelings and actions. Any thought you continuously impress upon your subconscious over and over becomes fixed in this part of your personality. So fixed ideas will then continue to express themselves without any conscious assistance until they are replaced. Meaning that when your conscious mind is in a negative place, negative environment, and it keeps saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, your subconscious does not have the ability to reject what the conscious is telling it. So eventually you teach your subconscious mind through habit, it becomes habitual. It just it becomes who you are. You just are a negative person now. Why? Because you've taught it so long. It hasn't got the ability to reject what the conscious mind tells. And it, then it expresses it through the body. And the body starts to become sick. And the body starts to become anxious. And the body starts to develop ulcers. And then and diseases come across the body quicker because of the state of your mind. But if you take your conscious mind and you start to be intentional and say, I'm not going to allow my conscious mind to be flooded by negative. I'm going to put boundaries in place. I'm going to start confessing the word. I'm going to use the Prospect Lock app. I'm going to start declaring scripture. I'm going to watch what I watch on YouTube and social media television. I'm going to be intentional with who I hang out, who I spend time with, who I listen to, what conversations, how much negative stuff I allow myself to be placed on me all the time. Those are all choices, boundary choices. And if you'll take your conscious mind and flood it with positive, nutritious uh, conversations, thoughts, and content, what's going to happen is it's going to now start telling your subconscious mind, you can, you can, you can. And eventually, in the same place where that overweight person was in a bad place, they now become a healthy, fit person, and they've got new habits, and they go to gym, and they live a much healthier life. The same goes for the way you see the future in your business, the way you see yourself in the mirror, the way you see yourself in every facet of your life. Peter Daniels eventually became a billionaire. But how does a 
26-year-old illiterate man who's an orphan change that way of thinking? Well, through the books that he read, the people that he met, and the places he went. And you can go to positive places, you can go to negative places. And so I want to encourage you. The last thing I want to say is if you take water, for example, and I use it in my Born to Prosper seminar, and if you can see water in a center in a jug in the middle, and on the right-hand side you can see a kettle, and on the left-hand side you can see another jug filled with ice, If I take the water which is liquid, which which represents our minds, our thoughts, and if I put it in the environment of a kettle and I boil that kettle, that kettle will eventually bring that water to boiling point and evaporate and all the water will disappear. But if I take that same water and I put it in a deep freeze, instead of it disappearing, it freezes it and it becomes a solid ice. So it depends. And that just I use it as an illustration to indicate the, the power of your environment. If your environment is constantly negative, and let's say the kettle is the negative environment and it evaporates everything well let's say the jug is positive you could you could be in the same place you could be one person can be in the same place and they can decide to choose to be in an environment of negativity of the kettle or that another person decides in the same place to be an environment of the positivity of the deep freeze and where one person's life is evaporating and everything that they touch is is just disappearing the other person is advancing being successful simply based on environment And I want to say to you today as we conclude this episode that leaders who think right win. And you must decide. You must decide today. You must choose today to say, I am able. I am able to to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. So amen. I've got so much more to say on this topic and subject. And I'll cover this in the Born to Prosper series that lies here. But I want to say to you that you are an incredibly successful person already you are already successful all you have to do is you have to see yourself as successful condition your mind and walk towards it possess your future the 12 spies who were sent into the promised land 10 came back said we can't and you're right they never did and two came back and said they could and yes they did and today we call our kids joshua and caleb because they are the two that said they could and we don't know anymore who those 10 were because scripture neutralizes those negative voices and society at large often neutralizes negativity and they celebrate you know victors and victorious people we don't put monuments up for people who couldn't we put monuments up for people who could and i want to say to you today you can i want to say to you go into this month and know this your business is blessed your business is prosperous your business is profitable but no we take that thought captive and we're going to change it remember it's just your conditioning we have to remove something and replace it with something positive. So get get busy. Buy a good book. Start a good Bible reading plan. Start to declare scripture. Start to get the Prosper Clock app. Put reminders onto your, your phone on a daily basis. Put every day as you eat, start to declare every day. Come on. I am I believe you are going to see exceptional things in your life this month, this year. This is your year of supernatural acceleration. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are blessed in your going in. You are blessed in your coming out. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the field. Blessed and highly favored are you. You serve a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think. I want to tell you today, my friend, that God loves you. God is for you. God is with you. Do not underestimate the power of your thoughts. Do not underestimate the power of God in your life. The Holy Spirit is with you. And take this month take this year and you start to change your conditioning you start to declare i can i am able and as peter daniels changed his life as i have changed my life in many ways as pastor art and many inspirational people have changed their lives from being in places of poverty lack negative thinking into places of positive thinking you can do great things come on i believe in you i know that god believes in you and you're going to have an incredible 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 year this year you start to change that conditioning. Amen. If you haven't read the Born to Prosper book, I encourage you to get a copy. If you haven't take, read the 90-day devotional, it's all resource that helps you to condition your stinking thinking into healthy, prosperous thinking. Amen. Have a great, great, great day, week, month. And I can't wait to be with you in our next episode, our next monthly episode, episode 12. But I want to say to you, come on, leaders that think right win. You are a winner in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us here at Leader Breeder. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to catch the next episode every month.